Hey folks, this is the Aegis Gladius, and it happens to be one of my favorite fighters. Now does this mean it's the best at bounty hunting? No, not really, but just look at it. It's a spacefaring fighter jet, and it's got fantastic agility to back up those looks. It's one of Star Citizen's best PvP ships, and it's really capable in NPC bounty missions too. It's a bit low on DPS, with only three size 3 guns, but it's agile enough to always stay on target in VHRTs. Even though it's not the fastest at clearing these missions, I still take it out regularly because it's bloody good fun. We'll take a look at combat in a few different locations with a combination of laser repeaters and cannons, mixed with distortion damage to see how the ship performs. So let's get into it. Before we look at the combat, I have two quick tips that have made my bounty hunting experience more smooth. If you're trying to quantum travel to a place that has overlapping targets, you can help the drive lock faster by thrusting forward at your SCM speed and aiming slightly to the side of the target marker. Also, if possible, you want to take the group bounty hunting contracts that are offered by the Northrock Service Group in Crusader Space and Hurston Space. They can be a bit more challenging, but they always have quantum travel markers, so you'll decrease the amount of times you need to fly hundreds of kilometers to your target. I think a decent measure of a ship is how it performs when things don't go to plan. How versatile is it for changing situations? This fight will hopefully show that the Gladius passes that test with flying colors, since we've just hit ourselves with a missile in a fight against three hurricanes and a warden. To help prevent this from happening, you want to be around SCM speed and moving in a way that clears your missiles when they fire from your ship. The missiles for the Gladius are attached to mounts under the wing, so if I'm strafing down when I fire them, I could strafe into my own missiles. My ship was moving downwards as I was locking my missiles, so I was thrusting upwards to cancel that movement before I launched them, but I fired them just a second too soon and so I still got hit by one of them. You need to not get hit for 5 seconds to recharge your shield, so I disengaged to recharge it before putting the power back to weapons and re-engaging. I'm using fixed laser repeaters here, which is a great loadout for the Gladius since the ship is agile and precise enough to stay on target with fixed weapons. To take advantage of that agility, I'm trying to roll my ship so that I track the hurricane by pitching towards it up and down, rather than yawing left and right. The max pitch and yaw rates of the Gladius are equal, but the bottom and rear thrusters of the ship are the strongest, so the ship will be more responsive to pitch changes. I'm also rolling and thrusting up to perform some corkscrew maneuvers since the incoming damage is really high. I'm trying to position myself in a good spot above or behind the hurricane, but while doing that I let some of the wingmen get some shots on me, so I fly past my target to disengage and recharge my shields again. As I give myself a couple seconds to recharge, I'm pitching around to maneuver quickly to not take any damage until my shields are full, and then I focus back in on the wounded hurricane. I'm using a lag pip so that the targeting reticule shows me where my shots are actually going to land on my target as opposed to a lead pip which would show me where to point the nose of my ship. I prefer this since I can focus on my target and get a better idea of when shots might still hit a target even if not dead center. We are head to head in this engage which is not what you want to do with a gladius since the hurricane has more firepower and tankiness but I slowly corkscrewed so I wasn't taking fire. We turn this into a pitch battle, and so I'm thrusting down while pitching up to track their maneuvers, even though we're blacking out a bit from the g-forces. We're landing all our shots and know that they're close to dead, so we just stick with it and we take them out. Now let's take a look at how that was supposed to go if our missiles hit them instead of us. I like to use missiles to help me kill a target when the enemy spawn is particularly dangerous. Like when you're in a group VHRT against 4 targets and 3 of them are hurricanes, which is what we have here. We're going to boom and zoom, so we want to hit them hard and fast, utilizing two size 1 shields to tank the damage and secure a quick kill. I send a full volley of size 1 missiles to soften up the target. You could also go for size 2 missiles, which can one shot a hurricane, but then you only have half the total missile volleys. Opening with missiles is especially useful in atmosphere, since the lower maneuverability makes it harder to avoid incoming fire. I focus the softened hurricane down quickly to remove them off the field, and since they're the only target I needed to kill for mission credit, I'm just going to get out of here to avoid a prolonged fight. Boom and zoom. Before we get into loadouts with distortion damage, I wanted to show the challenge of maneuvering in planetary atmosphere. 
Even though the Gladius is an agile single seat fighter, it can't just outstrafe incoming fire in the dense skies of Microtech. We're against a Hurricane and two Wardens, so my shields go down pretty fast when that's what I try to do. This actually makes a case for sticking to Crusader space for efficient bounty hunting, since it's the only location where you get group bounties and you won't have bounties that spawn on a planet. But if you just watch Top Gun and feel the need for an aerial dogfight, you can try this. Instead of fighting like a spaceship and strafing around the enemy, fly like a plane, disengaging every so often and flying past them, and then pitching back towards them. This way you can balance your offense and defense, keeping the target in front of you and avoiding incoming fire. If you fly like this in planetary atmosphere and stick to your SCM speed, you'll fare better than just trying to vertically or laterally outstrafe your targets when you're outnumbered. Now we'll mix in distortion damage to our laser repeater loadout. I've got a nose mounted XJ3 distortion repeater along with the same panther laser repeaters I was using before. Distortion weapons are another type of energy weapon, so it shares ammo pools with laser weapons and its magazine size and recharge are affected by capacitor settings. Distortion repeaters do half the DPS of laser repeaters and they don't damage the ship's hull at all. But while hitting the hull, distortion damage can disable ship components like weapons, shields, and thrusters, making enemies easier to kill. Here we're in the middle of combat with some Valkyries. Because the Valkyrie is a relatively large and slow target, the disabling effect of the distortion won't give us too much benefit since we don't typically have any issue keeping them in our sights. So it'll actually take us longer to kill them since we have less DPS than if we went full laser repeaters. Where distortion helps us is against some trickier targets like hurricanes, which is what makes them worth using. One other thing I want to point out is that the muzzle flash on the center mounted distortion repeater can obscure your targeting, so I recommend fitting it to one of your wings if your OCD can bear it. Here we see the distortion party trick. The Valkyrie is shut down and falling to the moon's surface. This isn't very common, but it's very satisfying when it happens. Here we're starting another VHRT mission, and I've moved the distortion repeater to one of the wing mounts so there's less muzzle flash blinding my sight. We're overflying them to see who we're up against and to pick out who we want to go after first. It also gives us an altitude advantage so that we can use gravity to aid our maneuvering. Since it's just two hurricanes and a warden, I think I can survive that incoming fire no problem, so I'm okay to go straight for the bounty hunting target, which is the hurricane. I'll keep checking the other targets as I close the distance just to keep tabs on everyone though. The primary value of using distortion repeaters in VHRTs is that you can relatively easily shut down hurricanes, since after you've hit their hull with some distortion damage, they will lose all maneuvering and firepower. This makes it easier to accurately target them and chew through their gigantic hull HP. It can be a bit of a trade-off though, since if you're in a fight with a lot of hurricanes and valkyries, the other enemies will still be applying a ton of pressure to you. So you might still need to maneuver a bunch, but at least in that situation your target's movements are predictable. Here, this hurricane has succumbed to the distortion effects and it's floating through space helpless, so it's just a matter of time for us to keep our fire on it so that we can take it out. Now let's take a look at how we fare with a mixed energy cannon loadout, using two FL series laser cannons and a sucker punch distortion cannon. We're going with the FL series laser cannons because they have no weapon spread, whereas the other models do. And for the Sucker Punch, we don't have any other option for size 3 distortion cannons, so it wins by default. I don't recommend mixing repeaters and cannons because they have different projectile speeds, which makes managing your targeting more difficult. In theory, a cannon fit does more DPS than a repeater fit because it's more capacitor efficient, but that's balanced by cannons having half the projectile speed and a lower range. In practice, this makes them a lot trickier to use because you want to be much closer to a maneuvering target to actually land your shots with the slow projectile speed. Here, we're fighting against three hurricanes, which are small and relatively agile targets for VHRTs. It's taken me some time and a few instances of recharging my shields, but I've finally disabled one of them and I'm working on chewing through its billions of hull HP. If my aim was better, I'd be able to kill hurricanes faster with this setup but in practice it ended up being slower because I missed more shots compared to repeaters, so it takes longer to get the hurricanes to the disabled state. One nice thing about cannons though is that the slower fire rate makes it take longer to deplete your ammo magazines. 
So if you're getting low on shields, you can let your ammo refill and then swap the capacitor to shields to recharge the shields. If you don't get hit while recharging your shields, you'll be full shields before you run out of ammo, so unless you need to disengage to get away from incoming damage, you don't need to stop attacking to recharge. Here I'm trying to take a position above this hurricane to give myself a better sight line on its larger top profile to hopefully make it easier to hit despite the slower projectile speed. I'm not flying too defensively at this point because I want to prioritize my offense to get through their shield as quickly as possible so that I can apply my distortion to their hull and shut them down, which will further expedite the kill. And now, I actually think we just hit that point. They're no longer firing back and they're floating sort of aimlessly, so we just need to get a bit closer and aim carefully and take them out while still moving around a bit since there's still one more hurricane shooting at us, as they were kind enough to remind us right there. And this actually looks like we're close enough to the ground that this is going to be another gravity kill, which is always a lot of fun, especially against hurricanes. Here's a report of kill times that I got from a few of my recordings with the Gladius in Atmosphere in 316. I picked fights at random based on weapon types, so I didn't try to fudge the data by only picking fast fights. It feels pretty representative, with the distortion repeater setup doing the best against hurricanes, and the full laser repeater setup doing the best against Valkyries and Wardens. With some more practice, I think the cannons would do best against Valkyries, but given how close the kill times are across all the weapons for Valks and Wardens, I recommend going with the distortion repeater setup since it gives you a meaningful improvement against the hardest VHRT target, which is the Hurricane. So since we're going with the distortion repeater setup, we've got our two laser repeaters and a single distortion repeater. I have a fixed setup here, but you can also go gimbaled for a 10% DPS loss if the aiming assist helps you kill targets faster. For the missiles, you can go with whatever size you like, but I prefer size ones. Go with EM missiles since all ships have large EM signatures in 316. For your shields, you want to upgrade to the industrial grade A palisade shields which have the largest shield amount, fastest recharge, and highest ballistic damage protection of all size 1 shields. You shouldn't change the power plant or the cooler since they won't give you any benefits in 316, and for the quantum drive I recommend either the civilian voyage or atlas to quickly get around the verse on a single tank. So I already mentioned in the beginning that the Gladius isn't the best ship at NPC bounty hunting, but I hope that through the combat footage you've seen how good it still is. Really, this is more of a testament to how incredibly capable a few of the top tier ships are more than anything else. The primary knock against the Gladius is that it doesn't have the best DPS and that many other light and medium fighters can put out more damage while having a similar survivability. Thanks to its maneuverability and small profile, the Gladius is still a good NPC bounty hunting ship though, while also being a top tier PvP ship, and it accomplishes that for about half the price or less compared to anything that vastly outperforms it, coming in at about 1.2 million Alpha UEC in game. It also offers a different playstyle compared to all those other ships, being much more agile and making the combat much more active, which can be a lot of fun. Sometimes in a fight you actually want to feel some pressure and feel like you might not get out of that situation. That's exciting and it feels rewarding when you pull it off. And thanks to the ship's agility and durability it can pull through some tight situations. I've lost tail fins and wingtips without losing any meaningful maneuvering or firepower, and that's really valuable for a dedicated combat ship. One thing I do have to warn you of though is that I have been killed a few times by NPCs ramming me in combat when I'm lining up to warp away. So you'll want to raise your speed to try and outrun them and avoid that. The last thing I wanted to mention is that while the Gladius doesn't have an interior space for another player, it does have a small external storage compartment and some gun racks, so there is some versatility for FPS combat missions and loot recovery as well. Overall. I think the Gladius is an excellent single seat fighter and it ticks all the boxes for me. I'll gladly recommend it to anyone who wants a good dedicated fighter for NPC or even PvP bounties. Thanks for watching folks, I hope you've liked this video. Cheers.